Hey guys, Greg here, Bone Tactical, and today I'm gonna do a live unboxing for you guys. I have a really cool, at least I think it's really cool, security camera set up here, some survival tools. Haven't seen any of the stuff yet, and definitely gonna be checking it out. I'll probably do some questions and answers here at the end, so go ahead and start commenting your questions right now. Let me know any kind of questions that you want. If you're watching this later and it's no longer live, questions and comments below. I'll still try and get back to those for you. I still try to go through my comments as much as possible. We are, let's just get right into it. I know you guys want to see these, these ca this camera system. It's a full system. It's 4K AI POI, uh, 16 channel remote access, just supposed to be all the bells and whistles. So we'll see. I've, you, you guys are aware I have a ton of security cameras. I do a lot of reviews on them. I've got security cameras at my facilities all over the world. Most of them I can access, if not all of them I can access from my cell phone with an application. So various, I have various applications, multiple cameras, multiple companies. I do have quite a bit of experience with the, uh, you know, cheaper Chinese cameras. Pretty much all cameras are chi Chinese cameras or from China anymore these days, but um, yeah, I'm gonna just finish up this unboxing here and, and I'll show the stuff in front of me when I actually get it pulled out here. Let's see. Comment also and let me know what you guys' experience is with cameras. I know I, what I do recommend is installing stuff yourself because a lot of people a lot of companies and stuff like that just actually charge a, a bunch of money to ins install and they charge a big markup. It's not, stuff's not hard to install and they charge even a big markup on the cameras because like I said, pretty much all the cameras are coming from China. All the equipment's coming from China. So you could pay like five, 600 bucks or, you know, do it yourself and get pretty much the same system that you could get if somebody paid you, you know, 5,000 or if you're paying somebody else, 5,000 bucks to do it. So it's really just um, something that should be taken into account, definitely. Let's, uh, let's take a look here at what these cameras actually are. So this is the, their night vision, their dome cameras, they've got the, the DVR, or this is an NVR, excuse me. It uh, comes with an NVR for closed circuit system, which is really nice because even if the, you know, internet goes out, it's still recording to a hard drive. You know, that's pretty cool. So it's a, uh, it's definitely what I would recommend as far as kind of top of the line, uh, affordable security systems goes. So there's a bunch of cameras in here. I think there's six, uh, all of the same camera. I will show one of the cameras since they're all the same. And then the rest, uh, I'll pull out of the box and set aside. I'm not gonna go through every single camera since they're all the same, but nice wrapping job. The the cable the the cables look you know decent, not not incredibly you know not not a thousand dollar camera, but a nice camera. Metal case, I, I definitely like that. It's nice to see a powder coated metal case over plastic. That's a, a big plus. The powder coating job is fair. Uh, the one thing I will tell you is you're going to want to seal these. Okay. They're great for outdoor use, but you're going to want to further seal these connections. However you choose to connect it. This is a POE, which means that the power can come through your ethernet cable. And, uh, so you've got your ethernet cable here and the power also runs through there. Nice metal connection here. You know, the cameras, it's a swivel camera, so it can be adjusted, uh, remote control, really just very nice. This is your pretty standard ethernet cable, right? So, but the cool thing is that the power actually runs through the same line. So you can run one wire. That's what POE means, power over ethernet. It means you can run one wire instead of having to run a bunch. So this is the camera, pretty standard looking camera. It looks like there is possibly a infrared sensor up top, nice lens, pretty decent glass on there. Nothing crazy, but, uh, it, it seems like it would be a good system. Uh, absolutely great system for the price is what I'm thinking. And uh, only time will tell. But so far, so good. And like I said, I mean, 
a system like this, guys, installing it yourself, you're just gonna save a ton of money. We're talking about literally saving thousands of dollars. Not only that, but this particular system, the link is in the description below, and if you use my name, and uh, if you use, you know, all you gotta do is click that link in the description, you get a better price because you bought it through Bone Tactical. So, wow, okay, so there's a bunch of these cameras. This system, the link in, the, like I said, link in description below, there's three, six, there's four, five, six, there's nine, nine cameras. Okay, these are all the same camera, but nine cameras is a ton of cameras. That's a ton of cameras, guys. There's nine of those cameras and the DVR, or NVR, I guess, NVR. It used to be DVRs back in the day, now they're NVRs because they don't have a DVD in them. It's a little bit of a different setup, but guys, this is a, you're not gonna really see much just by looking at this, it's just a little box, but this is where your hard drive is. You can connect it to a monitor, but you can also mount to like a computer monitor and have it there uh, monitoring all the time, but everything's recorded in this box on a hard drive and you can also just have it linked to your cell phone through an app. So, so it's really just a box. I'll probably end up, uh, I will announce that I'm considering building a new workshop. Uh, it's gonna be a massive undertaking because you know it's taken me five years to build the workshop I currently have. <laughs> Uh, but I'm considering building a new workshop and if I do then I'm gonna install this this camera system in my new workshop and be taking you guys on a bunch of uh, build videos so comment below if you want me to build a new workshop and if you want to see the, the deal with that I have a video here on the channel a Lorex camera video and that the Lorex camera video I did the entire install and it's the same kind of setup here I showed you guys how to connect the Ethernet I showed you guys how to set up the DVR and that's uh, that's what I, you know, so if you guys want to know how to set this up before I actually set it up, I have a video here and it's, the setup is the same. Like I said, all these cameras uh, of this particular style are pretty much the same thing. They're all coming from China and they're very, very, very similar deals. So. Definitely check out the Lorex security video. It's one of my more popular videos here on the channel. And then I, I will eventually do a build for this. They come with a, a user guide that's pretty self-explanatory. This It's just not difficult, guys. You got to have a little bit of maybe like construction experience or at least common sense because you've got to like, you know, mount the cameras on the wall and then run the cables and connect the stuff. So, you know, if you can't figure out how to do this, it might it might take you a little bit longer than it would take a professional to do it. But if you can't figure out how to do it using common sense, then you know you probably should judge what's going on, you know, with your skill set and what's going on with your ability to to uh, be, you know, be a little bit self be self sustaining, right? It's some it's a skill you should have. All right, so this is from. Uh, the link is the description below. It's a survival kit. It's an outdoor survival toolkit. And like I said, link in the description. Check out the video description for sure. There's supposed to be a ton of stuff in here. We're talking about uh, f fire starter, whistle, hammer, compass, ice axe, trekking pole, all kinds of stuff. I will take a look at it. Uh, it's got paracord, paper clips, um, fishing stuff, all kinds of all kinds of stuff. It's from Yeah Cool, uh, is the is the brand Yeah Cool. Obviously, it's you know a Chinese company. Doesn't necessarily mean it's good or bad. China has unbelievable capabilities of production. Uh, they can make stuff that's at least as good as what we can make in the U.S., if not better. Un unfortunately, you know, being a proud American, it's hard to say that. But they also uh, are. You know, you do have to be careful buying stuff from China because they do make very cheap stuff, just like people make in the U.S. It's like it's like anywhere. You got to look at what you're getting. So there's supposed to be a, you know, a tactical hatchet or tomahawk type deal in here, all kinds of different stuff. Interestingly enough, comes with a little American flag on there, you know, a little sticker on there for you guys that are into that kind of, excuse me, a little, not a sticker, a little uh, patch for you guys that are into the patches. Um, but it's just full of stuff. Here, this is a handle part, looks like. Okay, so we've got a handle part and we've got uh, another handle part 
Okay. And another handle part. And we've got, uh, this, is, this is the paracord bundle that has like fishing string and all kinds of other stuff in it. So we've got some guys tuning in and commenting. So T. Johnson asked if that has a Wi-Fi internet. So it's not a Wi-Fi unit, it's a PoE unit. They're a little bit better than a Wi-Fi unit. If, check out Blue Rams if you're looking for a Wi-Fi security camera. That's, that's what I use for the majority of my wireless cameras. Another piece of the handle section. Another piece of the handle section. So this thing might actually end up being pretty long. We've got uh, a shovel attachment and some, some what looks like knockoff Macmillan camo tape. <laughs> okay, that's if you want to camo. That's actually pretty great for if you want to camouflage your tools. We've got a, a, a tomahawk attachment or a, a hatchet attachment. Very crude, very cheap metal, very unfinished looking uh, tomahawk attachment. You guys can, can, uh, can see the difference here between a, a high quality custom tomahawk and then the whatever, whatever this is. I will definitely say that it looks about as cheap as it gets. Um, not to say that, you know, if I had to use a tomahawk or a hatchet to cut something one time and I mean, there's, it's really not even, it's not even, doesn't even have a good edge angle. There's no weight to it. So, uh, we can, we can go ahead and say it might work as a hammer possibly because it does have a hammer on the back, but as a tomahawk, it's, it's going to be limited at best in use. We've got a measuring tape, which is cool. You know, sometimes guys, more is not always more. In this particular case, more could be less if you have a bunch of stuff and it's just junk and none of it really works. So I'm not saying that, that that's the case here 100%, but, uh, but here we've got a little knife. The knife is relatively sharp. It's got a saw on the back. It's another thing, you know, it's probably good for an emergency. It might be like a one-time use thing but not, definitely not a knife that I would uh, want to carry. Owen Rollins asked if any stores will sell my products. And I have, there are a lot of stores that have been asking to sell my products, but the problem is, is that my, my products being handmade, I can't make them fast enough to sell them to stores. And also then you're gonna end up, Owen, oh, if I sell to a store, and then you buy my product, you're gonna end up paying even more money for my products because I have to sell to the store, the store has to make a profit, and then they're gonna mark up that product even higher than what I'm selling it for. So you don't want uh, the, the future right now and, and, and the way things go, if you can't buy it online, you don't wanna buy it. There's, uh, there's no, unless you're, you're talking about like going to Walmart or something or buying you know, cheap Chinese crap, then you know, off of, uh, you know, from like Walmart, all right? Then, then maybe you might want to get it, but you don't want to. If you go to the store and you buy tactical gear, then you're you're just wasting your money. So here's a, a spear tip, which is actually kind of cool looking. The only problem is is that it's hollow at the bottom, uh, probably maybe only two or three inches deep here. So if you, if, if it's gonna what what that would do if I use this as an actual spear would create a blockage and it wouldn't really work very effectively as a spear. So it should be hollow if it was going to be an actual effective spear. I don't think that this piece screws out. It might. It doesn't look like the bottom piece screws out. So that's that's unfortunate. Um, it would make a maybe a halfway decent tent peg, but it would definitely not make a good spear. Uh, well, I'm going to keep connecting these poles together and see how long of a final product we can get. Here. It's very grippy. That's cool. The pole actually has some nice jimping. It feels pretty decently solid. It's definitely some type of uh, low cost efficient, low cost aluminum. So what we're looking at is, uh, is, is a low cost aluminum. This would appear to be the fire starter ferrosium rod here. Okay, so it's a small but effective looking size wise ferrosium rod and a whistle. So you've got your 
survival whistle and your ferocium rod. I'm going to put that ferocium rod, since it's loose, j banging around inside the handle, I'm going to put it back in the bag just for safety reasons because it is highly flammable. Fer ferocium ferro rod for you survival guys. Going to keep uh, putting this. <laughs> Putting this thing together, it is quite the long pole here. And uh, honestly, you could do some damage with this thing. So not, uh, not going to lie, it is, uh, it is a, what, what I would consider to be a relatively intimidating pole. <laughs> would not want to get hit with this thing. And I think that's just about, there's a, a like a pickaxe, like a, pickaxe type attachment in the bag. There's a compass attachment in the bag, which is kind of cool. One thing I do recommend is to see how accurate your compass is, is to check the reset on it. So looking at this compass here, it's telling me that north is like pointing straight to my face, right? So then I'm going to go like this and spin it around and see if it still comes back to the same north. And it kind of does. It's not too bad. It's very slow. It's got a very slow reset and it's got enough of a, it's got enough of a, it's inaccurate enough that if I were to be using this to plot a chart and I had to walk all day and I was trying to walk to, uh, you know, a city, I might actually literally just by using this compass correctly because of the error in it, I could walk 50 miles to the wrong direction. Right. Uh, just because, of the error in the compass. So do be careful about using a compass for plotting a chart. You do have to be wary of what you're actually using the compass for. So this, uh, this particular attachment, I, I suppose, is what they consider to be the walking stick attachment. I do like it, it's pretty cool. It looks like a, it would be cool for, you know, a walking stick actually, or, you know, maybe a monopod, hunting monopod. If, if this, what I will suggest for you guys that made this bag at Yeah Cool, make a little make a little Y attachment for it, and then you can you can also have a, a shooting rest on top. All you got to do is make a little Y attachment. But yeah, pretty cool. I, I think my actually my what would be my favorite attachment is probably this little rubber thing because it's it's just kind of cool. And uh, and <laughs> this pole makes a nasty baton. All right, it really does. It makes a a nasty baton. It's aluminum, so it's not incredibly heavy, but you wouldn't want to get hit with this thing. So from there, the other attachments are the shovel point, and then it's got this uh, survival bundle thing here. But you've got the uh, hatchet attachment. These are kind of crappy. I mean, they're just, this is digging and, and, and you know, tool like uh, as well, it's like a just very cheap metal. Uh, but, <clears throat> you know, if you had nothing and you had to dig, dig a trench, it would be better than, than, than nothing, right? You could build, you could dig a trench with it if you had to. It would not be fun. But it's got a shovel. The shovel has like some, uh, some cool attachments that they, they talk about the, uh, the shovel has, uh, well, it's loose on here. The shovel must be some sort of like a 1095 steel or something because it comes with oil on it. And it's sharpened, but, you know, not actually sharp, just sharpened. Figure that out. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. Hex heads, something here that I don't know what it's exactly for, and then a bottle opener and a saw, and the edge is sharpened but not very sharp. So you could probably dig with this. There's a little bit of a bevel to it, not much. It's definitely, it could be used to dig with. I've got a high lift tool kit in my truck, and they say that this is like for overlanding or off roading. And my high lift tool kit that I have in my truck is like a hundred times better than this tool kit, unfortunately. But it is probably a hundred times more expensive as well. Uh, this is a pretty cheap kit as far as kits go. So if you like, you know, cheap tactical stuff and this stuff, this will work, right? This is probably worth looking into. This stuff, it will work. <clears throat> I 
If you guys have any questions and answers, now's the time to, to do the, the questions and answers. But definitely let me know what you want to hear more of or see more of here on the channel. I will work on getting that stuff out for you guys if you let me know. That's the only way that I can that I can really do it is if you guys let me know. And there are some guys tuning in. Mo Mo Theory, Chad Woodhard, Owen Rollins, T. Johnson. So I do appreciate you guys tuning in. And <clears throat> like I say, just let me know at which, you know, what point or what you would want to see from the future of Bone Tactical, and I will do my best to try and get you that stuff coming for you guys. This, uh, this bag is, uh, again, available with, it's already cheap, but it's available with a further 5% discount if you buy it from Bone Tactical, or if you buy it with the Bone Tactical discount code that's not from Bone Tactical, excuse me, I don't sell this stuff. But they sent it to me, and they set me up with a discount code that you guys can use on my website. And that discount code that you guys can use on my website now. They set me up with a discount code that you guys can use on Amazon. I believe both of these are sold on Amazon. Both, you can, you can get them both cheaper if you buy them with the link that's in the description of this video. So that's, uh, that being said, I'm not promoting this product for anything that it's not. It seems like a pretty cool product. Is it something that I would purchase? Probably not. Is it something that I'll use? Most definitely. You know, I'll be honest, I, I, I'll use this. I don't have any reason not to use it. I think I have all the more reason to use it, let's say, than I would to not use it. It's, uh, it seems like it would be, you know, if, if I didn't have a shovel, or I would definitely want to use this for a pick, for a shovel, walking stick, if I was in a dangerous neighborhood, you know, and wanted to walk around with a stick in my hand, or if I'm in the woods, any of the above. Those are all options, and this, like you guys saw, it has a walking stick, so, you know, I'm not, I'm definitely not bashing them. I'm not saying it's useless by any means. I do like <clears throat> higher end gear myself and I make higher end gear myself. So you guys have to make your own decision, you know, based off of your budget, what you can afford, what you think you need, all that kind of stuff. This definitely doesn't want to fit into the package <clears throat> like that, does it? I think it's putting it in backwards. So. <laughs> Definitely putting it in backwards. So I will, uh, Chain Epperson said that I need to make a big, bigger version of the Kank. The, what I would say is pretty much exactly a bigger version of the Kank as far as the effectiveness goes is the Bone Kogatana. And I do believe there's one left on the website right now. It's been a, incredibly popular knife. The Bone Kogatana is really just absolutely an incredible blade, just a game changer as far as fighting knives go. But if you're not looking for a fighting knife, if you're looking for something a little more chill, I guess, then I may be doing a, a Kank XL available for civilian purchase here in the next few years. It's uh, something we've had on Basically, we've done some custom orders and for some, for some custom clients and stuff like that. And we've had it kind of on the drawing board to be made for our general production. But honestly, with me making the world's most effective edged weapons and self-defense tools, it is so incredibly difficult just to keep in stock and for me to be able to make fast enough the knives that, that I have right now. I can't, I just can't keep them in stock because they're so amazing and so many people want them. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm not willing to cut the core. I'm not willing to cut corners. I'm not willing to make a cheaper version or, you know, just in order to get production out there. You know, I'm, I'm not doing this to get rich guys. I'm doing it to do it the right way. So 
I do appreciate your suggestions on products, but it's, it's so difficult to just to be able to get my products that I already make. I have a, a bunch of products that I would like to bring to the market, like a bigger version of the Kank. But the, the, the Kank is so incredible and so many people want them that can't even get them that uh, making a, another version when the original version is, you know, uh, unparalleled, it's just not, um, not the best idea. It's, it would be better for me to concentrate on getting some of those available to the people who need them than it would be for me to take the time to develop another product that might not be as good, right? So I've already got the mold for those and I've already got, um, and I've already got the, not the mold, I've already got the, the, the system figured out for those. I've already got them made and vented. I've, I've got them perfected and uh, I can spend that, that time making more. <clears throat> I'll answer one more question uh, before we call it a day. Owen Rowland said on the bug out bag, how about retaining food placers to hide or a second location or depending on how many days you be out for depending on the Bob. I don't understand that question. So I'm going to ask the next, I'm going to answer the next one ever heard of the lone survivalist. Is he and his black knife legit? Is it supposed to be a to be a higher end bushcraft? knife not I haven't heard of that actually and uh, if, if the knife is if they're selling the knife as virtually indestructible I can tell you 100% for sure that it's not stronger than any knife that I make and so if they're saying that it is it's BS uh, because I make these world's most effective knives point blank period so no I haven't heard of him but my knives are stronger than his that's a uh, unfortunate chain said, what's the problem getting manpower or getting materials? Uh, as far as me can, I'm, my products are just so popular that, uh, and there's one person in the world that can make them, that has the ability to make them. So the materials is not necessarily the problem. It's and it's not manpower either because it doesn't take manpower to make the world's most effective edge weapons. It takes an unbelievable amount of skill and ability to make them. They're handmade tools and there's literally one person on the planet that can do it. So that's, that's, that's it right there. It's not a material issue. It's, a, it's one man being able to do what one man can do, unfortunately. So we'll, uh, I'll close out with this. I've got a lot of guys tuning in right now commenting and, and checking in. I do appreciate you guys watching. Thank you. Bone out.